the second most important thing we can be doing after budgeting is recipe costing cards. So we're gonna go take a look at recipe costing cards here. Um, I'm gonna go in and you know we're going to the recipe costing card here and you'll see here that we have like all of these recipe costing cards done you'll see we have batch recipes and item recipes that's a really important part of the system a batch recipe is a recipe that goes within another recipe and can be inventory right so if i make a big batch of soup that's going to go into my item recipe that would be a cup of soup right so if i might make five gallons of soup the other thing i can do with that batch recipe is once that five gallons of soup is made and it goes on the shelf of my walk-in, that can be a, something that I can inventory okay. as well. A lot of restaurants are missing that. They'll go, oh, my vendor set me up with inventory or I have this spreadsheet. And then you look at those spreadsheets and those are all made up of the products that they buy. But most of the stuff is sort of like in transit. It's been made into, ra- mayonnaise has been made into ranch dressing. You know, you have different ingredients that are going into all the sauces that are in there. and the, So you know where you know, all of your pennies are going from when they land on your back yep. um, patio or whatever, your back uh, dock to their their journey into the, 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 the ranch mayonnaise. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because when you're looking at, I'm gonna get nerdy here, but there's a usage equation or accountants call it like the cost of goods sold calculation. We at Restaurant Systems Pro call it usage. And that's where we show that we used up a product. Well, if I put mayonnaise in ranch dressing, I haven't used it yet. So I got to account for it somewhere. Right, and so we do that. And so we get to true usage of product when we're comparing to what you actually bought and everything and what the POS says. I love that. I should have used, right? So here, item recipes, those end up getting mapped to the POS system. Each item recipe is gonna connect to a button on your POS. And that button is going to um, show you, like, like right, you know, here. If I'm looking at an item recipe of eight ounces of mushroom soup, it'll tell me if I sold ten of those, it knows exactly how many mushrooms is in that eight ounces of soup. It'll tell me how many mushrooms I should have used compared to what I actually used. Got it. So that's really, really super useful. Down to the dollar and the item here. Okay. So um, we have. It's really cool. You can like, if I go into a batch recipe, you can see that this is a. Um, actually haven't looked at this one here but yeah this is saying hey eight ounces of salmon with diced bell peppers they put down there and we have this batch recipe and it's saying hey this is making an eight one eight ounce portion here and you can see those portions in there and you can break down portions and all kinds of things in there um if i go to um let me go back here um let me do let's let's go to the i think we have an onion relish here that that greg likes to use so greg's our sa- he does sales and he does demos and all that but i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna find a batch recipe for a onion relish oh see i got a bunch of batch recipes for onion relish so let me let me let me let me do this i'm gonna go into this all-american cheeseburger okay and if you look here i have a 5.3 ounce patty i have two ounces of cheese i have a ciabatta roll you see here we have grouped tomatoes what groups mean is um for us is and that works for enterprise as well so if i'm buying uh tomatoes and i buy tomatoes from four different vendors i don't need to once i put them in a group i don't need to track which one from which vendor came in it's going to connect the last purchase into the system there okay so um, there's different things like that can happen where you know that doesn't work quite perfectly. Let's say I, let's say I bought like you know 20 cases of Jack Daniels and put it on the shelf, and then I bought another. You know I got a deal and bought one case. Well, the 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 cases of the 20 should override the the one that I bought, right? But there's certain situations where mostly it's the last one. So if you have four it. vendors, you buy pota- tomatoes from each one of those four vendors. When you get a delivery and it's come from a certain vendor, the system's smart enough to know that the inventory that's on hand is likely from the last vendor you purchased. Correct, from. yeah. And then yeah. if you purchase from a different vendor the next time, it's yep. gonna go, oh, yep. and does it matter if the cost of those vendors, is it? No, so it'll do the cost, the last price, and okay. the last cost. And so even if I buy it from one vendor at 20 pounds a case and another vendor I buy it at five pounds a case, it's going to know what the right case size Got is, it. too, on my shelf as well. One thing I am curious yeah. about, you keep on talking about like the significance of batch. So say like, you're doing a, like a chicken noodle soup, yeah. and you have all these different ingredients coming from all over the place, and now all those ingredients are combined mm-hmm. in a five-gallon yep. you know, giant uh, container in the, the walk-in. Yep. What is the benefit like the true, like why does being able to do the batch, the batch recipe, how does that affect your bottom line? So, um, 
a good a good measure of that is an example where I was working with uh, a client years ago, and one of the things that's important to me, I, I've told you this, whether somebody's paying me three ninety nine a month, or I had a client in this particular ch- case. They were paying me ten thousand dollars a month to go into their restaurant and help them. And if somebody's then paying me ten thousand dollars a month to go in their restaurant, it's very important to me that I make them more than ten thousand dollars. Right. Right. I want to pay. I want to. Anytime we're providing service, we want to more than pay for ourselves. Right. right. So if we see a situation where there's that kind of money on the line, then we can go in and we want to pay for ourselves. Well, one of the things that happened was they were going into a Fourth of July weekend. Right. And so we had just finished up the month of June, and the bookkeeper provided some books for their um, for their company. Now, what happened was June thirtieth was on a Thursday. Okay. And then they were taking uh, inventory every Sunday. So they were doing $300,000 in liquor sales in three days because it was like on the beach, 4th of July weekend, like the whole deal, right? So they go, and if you think about that, they're going to do about $300,000 in three days of liquor, like insane numbers, right? Well, just think about what the shelves look like on June 30th compared to um, uh, July 3rd on Sunday, right? the way emptier shelves, right? Yeah. But the, the the bookkeeper used the inventory from July 3rd for the end of June because that's the closest one that they had, right? Um, our, so what would happen is we would actually want to use the June 30th inventory. Now, the thing that's really cool is our software will automatically, we teach to do weekly inventory. It'll automatically calculate what that end, end of month inventory is so you don't have to do inventory twice in a week, which nice. is which is music to the, your manager's oh, yeah. ears. Yeah. So um, what happens is when you have a usage equation, the usage equation is beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory, right? That's the the math equation. But if I look at what is in real time, if I'm looking at my numbers for June, let's say, right? Well, everything that I have on my shelf June 1st is available for me to sell, right? And then I go through the month and I buy product. All the product I buy all month of June is available for me to sell. So everything on my shelf plus everything I bought is there available for me to sell, okay? Then we get to the end of the month and everything that is still on my shelf, I did not use, right? right? So I subtract that out of the equation, I did not use it. And what you're left is what you actually used, right? Okay. So. In the case of this example I'm the talking batch. about, if they use that July 3rd inventory, that inventory was like $25,000 less on July 3rd than it was on June 30th. So they actually reduced their profits by $25,000 falsely by using the wrong inventory numbers. Got it. Right? So, it. so, so that, yeah. in the case of the soup, if right. like in that example, say like you still have product from the last month sitting on the shelf in that five gallon container yeah uh and unless you fill you use all that going into the next month it yeah. wouldn't be an actual right reflection so let's say that chicken soup was worth a hundred dollars okay okay if i don't count it in inventory then my then my usage is going to be a hundred dollars more right and yeah. we'll say that i use it even though i didn't use it and it's sitting on the shelf so it might not yeah. be in the original packaging that it came to yep. you on the on the you know the dock but when you pull that out of that packaging and you put it in the soup, it's still technically on your shelf. Correct. Correct. Got it. Sometimes that can show up at big time, like where people will pro- they'll cut they'll they'll only inventory like the whole steaks, but then they cut steaks. Yeah, I, and that needs with yeah. more and more people mm-hmm. going to yep. match recipe. You Absolutely. might not. You might not. You're not going to dump out the booze that you didn't sell the night before. Correct. You're going to roll that into the next night. I'm assuming it. Correct. It's, it's going to be shelf stable. Yep. Um, what if that that's like you know ten gallons of. Yep. of vodka. I don't know the numbers to be right. accurate. With, yeah. I'm not a bartender mm-hmm. aficionado, but if you got like five gallons of vodka sitting on the shelf that was on last month's, yep. uh, you know, uh, whatever a ledger, yeah. then yeah. you, you want to make sure you're accounting for yep. that. So. Now, where that really comes into a point is now when I look at how much vodka I sold in my POS system, if I didn't look at my true usage, it could be it could be really 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 off, right? Right. So, like I like to use um, an example of like let's say I had um, let's say I had twelve bottles of wine on my shelf, right? And then I got a case deal, right? So I had twelve, I bought three cases, so now I have forty eight bottles available to sell, right? Then if I have thirty bottles, let's say at the end of that period, well. 
I would have only used 18. The 48 minus 30 means I used 18 bottles of wine that week, right? So then I go to my POS system and my POS system says I sold 17. Well, if I wasn't taking an inventory, all the information I would have is that I bought 36 bottles and sold 17 of my POS system. Right, because it's not accounting for the backlog. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and so we, we're, you're flying blind. You have yeah. no idea where you stand. And so apply that to chicken wings and every single item you sell, it's really, really important. Yeah. And let's say I cut steaks, or let's say I, I, I bought whole raw chickens. Let's use the, let's stay on the chicken soup. I bought whole raw chickens, but then I boiled them and picked the meat and made chicken stock and put it in the soup. Well, I still haven't used those chickens Yet, right. right? And we like to say use to rather than sold, cost of goods sold because we hope that the way we use product is by selling it. That's the goal. Right. But it gets wasted, stolen, right. over portion. You spilled. used it whether yes. or not it got used the way you intended or not. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so it's true usage. And when there's variances between ideal usage, which is tying your, your POS system to your recipe costing card, um, those variances will show up, and then you know you can do something about it. Okay. Right? Without inventory, that's you, you're flying blind. Thank you for answering yep. my question. We yep. have a lot to unpack, yep. so I don't want to. Yeah, that's hold important. You up in- that's a really important question, though. Thank Eric. you. So you know, and it's like, I have people tell me, um, I have people tell me, hey, I don't really want. I, I want the results that you talk about, but I don't want to do inventory. And I. I'm sorry, I can't help. Then you, you don't want to own a restaurant. Right. <laughs> this is a perfect example of like, it's this is a guide wire through the obstacles. Yeah. It's gonna, it's a, it's it's an accountability partner. Yeah, and like this is what you got to do to make money. This is what you got to do to know your numbers. Yep. And, um, and I think it's hard at first, but you have to remember that once you you develop these habits, it's just like putting your pants on yep. when you get out of bed. Yep. You know, like you don't think about it. You just go yep. through the motions. And you've heard our eight members say that, I think, you know, where it just becomes the way that you do things now. It's, it's not harder. It it's actually your easier. culture. It becomes your culture. Yeah, exactly. So here we have all this layout. So there we talked about, we were there on groups, tomatoes. Um, here, like there's potato wedges. You can see that's a direct product from Cisco. Then bacon, that's a batch recipe. So it's another recipe within a recipe because how do I buy bacon? And I don't buy it by the slice. I buy bacon by the pound, mm-hmm. right? So now we got to have a conversion recipe that says a case of bacon makes this many slices, right? If I'm using by the slice of bacon, right? And so um, those are things that you need to, to check. Now, when I'm in the in the software, if we're looking at the software, I can click this eyeball and it tells me like, oh, we said 10 pounds, of, 20 pounds of bacon, two 10 pound cases makes... Um, uh, let's see here. If I go view, I can view the recipe and go through that. So we're saying, hey, this 20 pounds of bacon in this recipe makes 215 slices. And we've even made it to where it says, hey, we have these metal bowls that have 25. So you can completely customize this. So now if I'm inventorying, I can just count how many metal bowls I have and know how much bacon's there. Right. Without, so now I'm not doing inventory where I'm counting individual slices of bacon in inventory. And it's accounting for the, the you know, it's because it's a different weight and all those things, too. So we use these this breakdown of a batch to get down to the one slice. But we also know that a whole hotel pan of bacon is two, uh, 215 slices, which is the whole two to two 10 pound cases. Got it. And right. what you're looking at, so the bacon slice batch, this is the recipe you're saying? This is this a is... batch recipe for getting down to a slice of bacon. Okay. But then I store it in metal bowls, and there's 25 slices in that metal bowl. Got it. So and I figured like, that like, out. A, like yeah. an eighth pan or something like that? Yeah, or? I don't know. It was uh, They Not put it in there. So another thing where batch recipes come in where people don't realize that there are certain things that are batch recipes is I might buy cucumbers. Well, I buy it most of the time I buy cucumbers by the each. But I'm using them by the slice on the line, right? So I, I really want to know, like, what th- I'm putting three slices of cucumbers. I'm very exact, right? But I got to cost out three slices of cucumbers. So now I can say one cucumber makes, on average, 25 slices of cucumbers. And now I know how much a slice of cucumber costs. Me. Got it. And then as those invoices come in and the prices of cucumber change, it's all automatically connected. I don't have to do it again. I love it. Right? Here I can click on view location, and this will tell me I can just add these this batch recipe slices of bacon to any one of my inventory locations, which are completely customizable. I've even had Hobbit Hole be as a inventory location where that dark space under the stairs they call their Hobbit Hole. <laughs> that's what that restaurant called it, and that's what it is named in the system. I love that. It's completely customizable. So those are in there. Um, so now when I'm working in recipes, I can follow the path back to where I was working. We were looking at this American cheeseburger, right? But I just followed the path. I, so if, like, let's say that price of bacon seemed weird. I could inspect the recipe and go, oh, is this r- correct? And follow the path through it too. Um, I can put links here. Um, we actually have um, 
you know, we're on, we're on here and you can see it, but we, when you print these out, um, and put them on there, we're actually putting these with our, with our, as we talk about tying this over to our PO system, we're going to actually be able to pull these up on our KDS system. So when you're in the kitchen, you have the KDS, you can, it can also double as a recipe screen oh, cool. um, on there too. So, but now I can just take my phone, I can scan my recipe and we teach you to upload Apple them, the right? So there's an ad there. But now, and we teach to do it on YouTube because it just optimizes it and we're making a recipe here, right? So you can scan this recipe ca card. Correct. And, and then that will bring you to a video. Of how to make uh, your recipe. Awesome. And what we do is we actually have training on creating your own YouTube channel and uploading um, uh, non-public videos. And the, you can only get to them by the link. So you have this whole training system in the background of your YouTube channel that's just there for staff training and things like that. And um, it ties directly into the software. You just put the links in there and the QR codes created automatically and you can... Awesome. You know, yeah. So that's 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 a pretty neat feature in there too. When so like from here, that's where you would go. Hey, I can generate the recipe card here. So now I have this recipe card, and you can see here that this is also there's notes that convert it to how a cook makes it versus how it's costed out. Because sometimes how I cost it out is not how a cook's going to read it efficiently, right. Right? right? I might say four ounces of four fluid ounces of cream when to a cook I would say a half cup of cream or yeah. something. You I know love that I mean? you have so, a picture yeah. of it too, just yeah. because like. This is what it looks like when it's put together. Correct. The, yeah. We put our lettuce and our onions and our tomatoes on the bottom of the yeah. burger, not on the top. That is in that order. Lettuce, tomato, then onion. That is how we do it here. Um, I'll have old school restaurateurs go, I don't read a book while I'm making a burger. And it's like, well, nobody does that. We're not saying for you to do that. We're actually just creating a standard, a line in the sand that you can refer back yeah, to. So yeah, so if one cook... <laughs> was trained one way to do it another cook was trained another way to do it and there was a there's an argument of say, of the right way just yeah. go back to the freaking photo man. yeah <laughs> argument solved solved no yeah. argument to begin with cement yeah. it like exactly. draw the like like make it make it official right because yep. drift will happen yep yep absolutely so that's what the, the so that's an item recipe and you'll see we have batch recipes within you can see we have direct products that we can use uh, groups that are in there to keep it up to date with enterprise there's basically uh, super groups where you'll have a tomato and you'll and and in enterprise everything's a group because each store might be buying a different tomato but that tomato's got to go in that recipe for the burger and and it is it is controlled from one parent restaurant is chosen as the parent and then all restaurants have that recipe in it too. So I could have 30 units and do all the recipe costing cards for 30 units. And then each individual store will have the correct one that they're buying in that store too. And even reports that compare which, which is the best price across the stores. Or if the vendor, sometimes there's vendor deals where they're supposed to be uh, providing the best price, but it's hard to track and it will track it for you. How long has Restaurant Assistance Pro Enterprise been available? Uh, about, about 18 months. Okay. About 18 months awesome. and really over the last year perfected. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Yep. So the enterprise includes being able to run like budget variance reports and PLs across where it can combine stores and areas and maybe Maybe I have EIN numbers that have three stores. So if I want to do taxes, I need to combine those three stores into one document. But running each of those three restaurants, I need those numbers separate, right? In accounting, you'd use like classes for that. But in our system, it's all enterprise and we can combine or add or subtract and put them in different areas. So that's recipe costing cards. Um, there's more to it where there's prep systems attached to that and things like that, but that's a good overview of them. And what yep. are you going to be talking about next? Too. So um, talking about next from recipe cards, we naturally go into looking at what our purchasing and what our usage is because then we want to concentrate on the, on the top 20% of what we're buying to make a difference in our business. So I'll look at that. Awesome. Can't wait to get into it.